everything else quickly you have, then share it now, or share it whenever it comes up. <laughs> you want to hold your peace. <laughs> no, well, you want, we want to hold our peace anyway. <laughs> uh, we, in fact, we, we want to rest our hope, right? We want to rest our hope. Uh, and that's where we're going we're gonna to start, the, kind of where we left off. I never really finished, I just stopped. <laughs> you know, pause. Uh, just to pause, hit the pause button until we get back together again. So I do want to go uh, kind of start where we left off because um, it is important for us. You know, it, what was said about the heart, um, you know, and, and before the, the, the transformation, before the, the new creation was possible, you know, they, people would draw near with their mind, but their heart was far from it. See, that's what that's what the problem was. Was the heart was the, was the part that had to be brought near. So the heart was what had to be changed. That we had to get a new heart, a new cre become a new creation in Christ, and He puts a heart, a new heart in us, and that heart is already near. Now the problem is that we've got to get our mind to draw near with the heart that's already near. Uh, and that's where sometimes the, the struggle is, is because our mind will try to tell us one thing, and the, and the reality of the heart is where we're permanently positioned with Christ. He is in us. We're in Him. He that's, he that's joined to the Lord is one, one spirit. spirit with Him. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. Uh, we are uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit. We, are, we were created... Uh, in this new creation in Christ to be a dwelling place for God in the spirit uh, and he loves to dwell in his temples in his temple which is the corporate body and the body res resonates and responds back to him like Tina was saying we, we sorry we got a little late this morning but I wish you were here I wish you, could, <laughs> yeah. wish you had been here uh, I may try to start just putting the worship on this as well but uh, uh, we had a great we had a great time of fellowship and, and worship this morning, and so glad for everyone that's, that's able to tune in. I see several that are that are on now. Deborah Skidmore, she's on there. <laughs> she's two places at one time. That's really awesome. uh, so that small print there, when I'm trying to read it. Uh, Mary and Lund. Mary Ann, there's Mary Colbert, uh, and uh, coming from mid. Uh, from uh, Missouri, Missouri, uh, Moscow, Mills. Moscow Mills, Missouri. Uh, anyway, we're glad to have everybody that's joined us this morning, and there's already been an atmosphere of of, of awe and, and awesomeness here this morning. So we're just, we're just glad you're with us. Let us draw near. If I hope you, if those that are watching, those that are here, if you have your notes and have your Bible open, let's go back to uh, Leviticus. Uh, where we left off a little bit last time. I know Leviticus doesn't seem like a good place to talk about the gospel, but it's in there. It's in there. Uh, and last week we talked about the fact that when the, the, the priesthood that became the point, the point reference pointing to Christ started with Aaron. Uh, and uh, you can look at previous chapters in Leviticus that talks about the different the different the trespass offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, the burnt offering, the rain, all of it relates to Christ. All of it relates to Jesus. And we could spend uh, hours and hours talking about each one, but uh, this first time that Aaron offers up this pointing to Christ is received completely and consumed completely by God and, and is, as, a, as a reference that this is his chosen sacrifice, was that his son was coming. This is the shadow to which the substance was coming. Uh, and so then, just almost immediately after, is it, too, is it too cold in here? Is everybody okay? All right. I know I've got the heat on a little bit over here. It's a little cold over here. So if you, if you get cold, move over there. If you get hot, move over here. Uh, so, and if you're lukewarm, I don't know. I'm standing in the middle too. So, uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna draw near, and all of us are gonna be on fire in our in our in our head like we already are in our hearts. But so this, immediately after this, the two sons of Aaron began to say, okay, well, we think we can add something to this. So we're going to get something, we're going to get a coal from a different sacrifice, and we're going to bring it over here, and we're going to celebrate what we're doing, or what we think is, and, and immediately there was a refusal of that. But I, what I want to focus on in, in uh, chapter 10 there is this verse uh, where Moses talks to Aaron, and he says, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. 
Uh, boy, and if anything was, you know, what Tina was sharing about the the holiness of God in that in that song uh, by Darlene that she was reading out of Revelation, and before all the people, I must be glorified. And uh, this offering that he had designated was to to show what the glory and, and the the uh, holiness that was required. And the glory that's all his because of what the sacrifice that he was sending. So there's a there's a designation here. So uh, based on the context, how can we be com comforted by these two requirements in approaching our God and Father? Uh, look at look at uh, let's go. To, uh, I know I've got Romans in there. Do you mind if I I've got one little rabbit trail? Uh, Hosea. It's not in your notes. Hosea, I don't even know where it is. It's uh, Daniel, Hosea, I don't know how to, how to remember the chapters in order. Daniel, Hosea, uh, uh, Joel. Okay, Hosea chapter uh, 14. Hosea chapter 14. I'm sorry I get these little pop-ups that come up in my heart. Uh, and I try to get the little rubber hammer and beat them back down, but they keep, pop they keep popping up. Uh, but... <clears throat> Holy Spirit sending you a tweet. A tweet. There you go. And a tote tweet, too. Yeah. Always tote tweet. Always tote tweet. Always tote tweet. <laughs> That's what you heard to say, right? Exactly. It is, isn't it? It's always so, it's always so sweet yes. when he tweets. Because yeah. right. he's always tweeting to our hearts <laughs> the reality of what he's done for us and who Amen. we are because of what he's done. Yeah. Our position. He loves us like the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you know, and we, you know, we, we get to be, we, he, get, he lets us be, be fathers and mothers and grandparents just to show us a little bit yeah, of what's potentially there. Yeah, that's right. uh, and it's amazing. Uh, it says, uh, take, uh, verse 2 uh, of chapter 14, take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity, receive us graciously, graciously for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. I look at there should be a little asterisk by the word sacrifices. Uh, and if you go down to what that word really is in the original language, it's bull calves. So isn't it interesting that the sacrifice that he showed Aaron, you know, that was Aaron was offering up, which was pointing to Christ, is that's the that's what causes all iniquity to be removed, and that's what causes us all to be received graciously, is the sacrifice of offering up the bull calves of our lips, the praise that gives the glory to Jesus, gives the honor to Jesus as our sacrifice and our reason for being accepted in the beloved. We're accepted in the beloved because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. And so that's what removes the, the hindrance. I remember, um, again, you know, I, I don't, I'm not saying anything about past experiences to bring any condemnation or criticism, but I remember being in churches where uh, uh, we were when we were doing praise and worship. Even the pastor would kind of lead the. We'd, we'd be wet back away, and as we continued to praise, and we would be and we would be working, kind of working our way to the to the throne room. We would be getting we'd be getting into the throne room because of our praise, um, and we're kind of working our way in by you know what what we were doing and how much how loud we were getting and how much how much we felt how good we felt about. Uh, maybe the, you know, our, our level of repentance and how much Bible we read that week and all these things that were kind of ushering us in by, and all of that really is the same thing. It's always profane fire. It's, it's profane fire. It's a profane sacrifice that's not acceptable. Our, what we do, and that's why this, this message this morning about drawing near, our hearts are, are, are kindred. They're, they're already near. It's our mind that keeps looking for reasons why we can't be near to our Father. And I keep thinking back. I know when I when when uh, Kennedy was president, John Kennedy was president. I keep thinking about uh, his son, John Kennedy Jr. And when you, I mean, he could have uh, presidents of countries and dignitaries in his office, but John John, we call him John John, was always able to walk right in and make himself at home. Amen. Set under the desk. I mean, you have these things. This, you know, the most powerful man in the world. God is the most powerful in the universe. But he 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 encourages us to draw near and to come in Amen. Amen. as.
as children as in our in our hearts to draw near. Let us draw near. He wants us to draw near, and, and, and I want I think he wants us to understand that this is like we were talking about with hope, to rest our hope last week. I think sometimes things can become more technical than relational. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, where we're technically trying to do things. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good example right there. But technically in our lives, we're trying to do the things that would, that would cause God to let us draw near to him. Uh, doing the right, you know, or, or, or even going through the motions of things that we see in Scripture. And they're all good and they're all there for a purpose of bringing us into the reality of where we are. Yes. Because of Christ. But they're never intended to be a, 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 a means formula. by a formula by which we we are able to draw near. Right. And I think that's why he he's been focusing with me this week uh, uh, from a relational. This is a relational thing. This is a father and son, father father and children relationship. And our heart uh, knows that. Like when we see like what we were saying with our worship this morning, the heart the heart, you know understands I, I can't there's not a better word there's a supernatural understanding in our heart when we when we experience that yeah. mm -hmm. that realization and revel that when we get that epiphany uh, of who we are and, and as children but uh, sometimes we are, are still trying to find ways to be uh, uh, relationally we're, we, we're sometimes we're, we're made by circumstances experiences things that happen condemnation, being the cheapest route, kind of bringing us into a place where we don't feel like we're we're near to God or dear to Him, even sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but nothing could be further from the truth. We're we are near and dear to God, and He wants us to draw near. And so we're gonna we're gonna look at that a little bit. Uh, he wants it. He wants your your experience with Him to be relational. He wants you to relate to Him as who you are, as a son. And it's a daughter. Uh, the other, the the other uh, there in Romans that's in your notes, Romans chapter three. Um, uh, starting verse twenty one says, "But now, everybody say now, now, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed." being witnessed by the law and the prophets. We just saw a witness that was pointing to Christ, uh, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. For all of us have sinned and fall, have fallen short of the glory of God. That was the point. He wanted to fix what was causing the separation, and he did. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as the mercy seat by his blood, the propitiation, the mercy seat by his blood, through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because of his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. The two things that were, were, were in that verse about his holiness, his holiness is a comfort to me because his demonstration is that for us to be related to him and to draw near to him, we have to have the same perfect holiness that he has. Amen. Amen. And, and that's, a, that's a demonstration in this verse that he can now judiciously and legally, he's just and justifier of those that have faith in Jesus. See, it's, a, it's a just uh, decree by God to declare you righteous because he made Christ to be your sin. Amen? So there's just there. Now he's the justifier. He's not the condemner. It says it again in Romans 8. Who shall, who shall bring a, a, a charge against God's elect? It's he that justifies. Who is it he could going to condemn? Well, who is it that often does? <laughs> me. The, 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 the unholy trinity. Me, myself, and I. Right? Right. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all in agreement about how much we're loved and how much we've been brought in there. So uh, the other comfort is the fact that he, he must be glorified uh, is when we when we uh, are acknowledging, uh, like we did with this this passage in Revelation, we're acknowledging the glory being given to the Son because of what He's accomplished for us. The liberty and the freedom of that it, it, it means that because He was completely and totally accepted, 
then we can we are completely and totally able to draw near, uh, and and that's the, that's the glory that we give him. We share in his glory when we offer what he's designated as the as the reason that we are both can, can receive. We can be glorified because in sharing his glory because we're offering to God in our hearts the reason that we can share that, and that's because of Jesus and because of Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so. Uh, Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter four. There's there, this is going to be a two part. I, I was going to do it all today, but I don't think we have till three or four o'clock to do it. Uh, and uh, but I, I, I want to. This week we're laying a, a little bit of a roadmap for it, and next week it's living. It's, it's living it out in, in an illustration that Jesus Himself put in Scripture for us to be comforted in this in this capacity. What we're going today, next week we'll look at. On the basis of the story, the stories that Jesus shared that relate to what we're talking about this week. Okay? okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Uh, it says, uh, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now you're already renewed where? In your heart. In your heart. And, and that you put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In true righteousness and holiness. Uh, and that's the righteousness and holiness that we become, like Kim was saying, because Christ has become that for us. Amen. He is our righteousness and he is our Amen. holiness. And that's the only true holiness and that's the only true righteousness. Amen. I, can't, I can't attain to righteousness, but I can receive it uh, as a gift from him as the one who's become that for me and has given it to me as, as, as being his righteousness. Now, uh, and then he goes on to say... Uh, uh, I lost my spot there. Okay, 23 and 24. Uh, and you, and you, uh, and that you put on the new man which you created according to God, true righteousness and holiness. Now, uh, how are we renewed? How are we transformed? And let's look at that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Most of y'all can quote that, I'm sure, by now. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, uh, let's, I'll just start with 16 nevertheless when one turns to the Lord the veil is taken away the veil of separation the veil that would keep us from drawing near is removed that veil was his torn flesh we are coming to God our Father through the, through the veil of Jesus torn flesh he removed the, the separation that, that, that kept us from being able to draw near. Uh, and then it says, uh, Now the Lord is the, is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding up as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of God. So the question you notice is, how are we, trans how are we renewed or transformed, and by whom? By the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. I'm not transforming myself. I'm beholding what's already happened for me and is, and is a reality in my heart. And I'm renewing my mind to come into the understanding of what has actually happened. And the spirit is bearing witness to my spirit of who I am because of what Christ has done. This new creation reality that I have, the Holy Spirit is the witness to me and in me. And he's giving me that witness of the reality of my being in Christ and Christ in me, being one spirit with him, uh, and being uh, in all ways. It says of his part, we've received, does it say we receive part of him or of his fullness we've all received? And grace upon grace. Are we complete in him? Yes. Are we a work in progress? Yes. The only thing that's progressing is our revelation here of what's real here already. Amen. And that's that. These are these are these can be hindrances to drawing near, to being able to draw near. Uh, and it's by the Spirit. It's it, it's His it's it's His joy and His comfort to us to declare the things that are freely given to us by God and His through His work through His Son. In Romans eight, if you know we we. We were carrying around copies of Romans 8 there for a while, but there's 17 times, I think, that the Holy Spirit is mentioned in that one chapter, uh, bringing us 
the, the revealing truth and revelation of this reality that we have. Uh, so again, he's, he's wanting us to draw near. Uh, our hearts are knit to, with him and our mind is where we have to be changed and transformed because I'm telling you, every week, something's gonna happen in your experience, like, so like Deborah was saying, conditionally, that will make you want to question your position. Right? Yes. But does it? Yes. It does not change your position. Yes. Uh, but it, and, but it, in, in, in the way that I learned in the past, the way I, I felt like that I was suddenly in a position where I was separated. Uh, as, as, uh, as children, we don't like that. As, you know, we don't like the, the feeling, or in, in, in when we have rejection, there's gonna be rejection in this world. Uh, and we experience that, but there's never rejection from our Father in heaven. Amen. Never. Amen. Uh, no, no condemnation, no separation. Amen. And uh, I was sharing earlier, this is something Marcus gave me a link to, a pastor up in Minnesota, I think it was, but uh, talking about this young boy that, that had stolen something in, in a tribe in Africa. Uh, and, uh, or maybe, maybe somebody else, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it's the truth. But they, the, the, so they brought the tribal elder, the chief, and set him down in this circle and it looked like it was gonna be one of those condemnation things that were like to try to bring him to judgment for what his mistake was. And so he set him, they set the boy down and this tribal chief, this leader began to tell him that you are, your father is this man and your grandfather is this. And your, he, he began to lay out identity for this, uh, for this boy. Yeah. Uh, and that identity was see was what was causing him to, to stray and do what he was doing. See, uh, the reason we don't we do things we, we we're fearful about doing is because we don't know who we really are and who, and who we're completely and totally sealed into a relationship with. But being reminded of the of, of who we are, confessing homologio exologio with one another, is is such a is such an important thing and for us to not be. Uh, separated and brought to a place of judgment and condemnation to where we don't want to draw near because of fear. Perfect love casts out fear. all fear. Uh, there is no perfect love in this world except in Christ. We have Christ's love is perfect uh, and his love can be perfected among us when we understand like it says in 1 John when we understand what's, what he's done for us and, and, this, and how this is completely and totally permanently sealed. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 12 says, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all. What's the Greek word for all? Oh. All. Uh, having obtained temporary redemption. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal. The old system was temporary. It was the master card until the master came and paid the bill. Right? Yeah. Uh, now, it says, uh, having attained eternal redemption, not for, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling, and un, uh, uh, the ashes sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. How much more? How much more? Now, uh, what is it? the question is, what are dead works? Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 talks about them being elementary principles to understand about this new creation that we're in now. But a dead work is almost the same thing as what the profane fire that we just talked about. Dead work is doing something in order to make ourselves more acceptable uh, and to be able to, to draw near. I mean, we, we see so many examples in our society, uh, like if, if, uh, if I wanted to, uh, uh, I heard some, somebody, I forget who it was, give an illustration, and they went to Russia as a missionary. And years ago, to try to make a phone call back to the U.S., they had to go through this where they had to, had to make, a, make a, fill out a, permission, we want to make a call to our family in the U.S. And so after, it took three days uh, 
and you could make it. You, then they you had to set up this this whole process, and and uh, uh, then after three days, the, call, the your phone rang, and they were going to make that call. And if the, the line was busy or whatever, deal's done. Got to start over. Three days, three days process again. So there was a there was and, and when you were on the phone, they had a, an agent, a government agent that was listening in on your call to hear what you were saying. Uh, so I'm saying that just as an illustration that there's sometimes we feel like when 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 we're uh, these things happen in our life conditionally that we feel like that we're that God's not not hearing us that He's nowhere to be found and sometimes even when we're praying uh, the, the temptation the enemy tries to, to bring in our minds see it's not in our heart the heart the heart is near but in our minds we want to think what is keeping this what is keeping me from fulfilling this this request in my life or this problem in my life or whatever. I'm telling you it's not, there's nothing that's, it's not because of any separation. There's no separation there and that's, he wants us to draw near. Now that's it, so a dead work is something that, that I find myself still being tempted to do at times. Anybody else, is it just me? Uh, but that's an elementary principle that we need to get past because a dead work is going to do the opposite. It's going to make us feel like that we are unable to draw near without our own input, without our own doing enhancing God's opinion of us. We want to get back in the flesh. Right. What what uh, what is the word hope? I mean, uh, 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 what's the uh, glory, glory. What's the what's the what's the word for glory? Doxa. Doxa. To have a good opinion of someone resulting in praise and honor. See, he has a good opinion of you because of Christ. That's right. You, he has a good that cannot be changed because unless Christ can be changed, unless what he did can be changed, that can't change. He's the mediator of a new covenant and a high priest over a better covenant because it can't be altered can't be changed. Amen? Yeah. Uh, so we have to be careful with these dead works because they will cause us to feel like we we can only draw near by adding some things that we're trying to do that kind of make up for something that we feel like God's cause, it's causing separation. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 4. Flip back to Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 uh, verse 16. Did I? Okay, no, four, let's start with 14. Seeing then that we have a great, awesome, glorious, perfect, exalted, wonderful high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. What is confession there? Agreeing with God. Agreeing with God. Homologio. Uh, agreeing with what he says. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but it was always all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Uh, uh, there's no boldness without rest. There's no boldness without resting our hope. Uh, in fact, uh, the more boldly we come, is the more that we're acknowledging the sacrifice of, of, of Jesus, right. of, of what he accomplished. The right. more boldly we come, we, we come to the throne of grace, the more we recognize, we're, we're showing our rec and recognizing how, just how much he did accomplish mm -hmm. uh, in his finished work on the cross. Mm -hmm. And so there, again, here's in the past, I thought, you know, I was always taught you can be bold only if you've got your consents confessed and if you've read up and You've done this, and you've gone a week without sinning. That's a that's a laugh. Uh, that you can begin to approach again. No, and and the reason is, look at look, that we might obtain what? Mercy. mercy. Again, mercy is what's the definition of mercy? Not getting what Not you, getting you deserve. deserve. Yes, sir. And until you obtain that, we're never going to find grace anyway. No. So, and then we and grace is what? Getting those things that we don't deserve because of Jesus. Yes. And is it just a little bit of grace? It's, it's, it's grace upon grace. It's, uh, and it's in time of need. So in a time that we do have needs, we do have times where we, 
And I believe that he's wanting to restore to us a joy in our heart to be able to draw near. Not that we're not, that we're not close, but yes. in our minds we're separated. Yes. In our minds we're separated. You know, go ahead, Marcus. Yes, I remember Spencer mentioned last time. We who believe have entered into rest. So we're speaking, and it's inevitable, I think, that we have to um, get into a metaphorical you know, mode. We're saying figuratively, let us draw near when, as you said, that's just a, a, a figure of speech because we are literally in him. Yeah. We are li literally seated in heavenly places with him. That's the and, literal. So yeah. when we say let us draw near, we're using figures of speech yeah. that really soften and really kind of cast a shadow upon the actual truth yeah. that there is no separation. Absolutely. Yes. And that's why I say the reality is here and the Holy Spirit is here witnessing to us and in us about it. But it's here where we're, and, and what we're dealing with in, in that separation here is the lack of abundant life. It, it's, it, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, and you're not going to have abundant life if the mind is convinced, trying to convince you of the reality that the heart is, 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 is not in agreement with it, that's not true. But it does come to, and it does, it, it does cause us to be hindered in our relationship. And again, this is relational. It's not technical. We're not doing these things to technically do anything. We're doing something because we already have this perfect relationship established uh, that even goes to the point of saying the Holy Spirit will not translate the word Father except as what? Abba. Abba. It's, got to, it's, it's not only not just it's not Father, it's, it's Daddy. Uh, it's a more endearing term of our relationship because uh, some people have trouble relating to the father uh, analogy because they didn't have good examples of fathers uh, and that's, just, that's, just, that's sad and that's a shame but, but it doesn't take away from the example that, that, that we have as parents and how we feel about our kids that, that he wants us to know we, that he feels about us now uh, so li mercy is listed because mercy is our access and once and for all it gives us free access there uh, and so uh, there are needs that we have and we want to we want to come boldly uh, and that word boldly again is what parisia yeah you know that's a little more uh, profound to me instead of getting what I, I didn't deserve is getting what Jesus deserved amen right? amen good. yeah amen we get what Jesus deserved because he got what we deserved. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And if he went to all that, if God went to all that trouble to bring us into his relationship with his son, then anything that we acknowledge other than that is, is profane fire. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a dead work. It's, it's a, uh, okay. Uh, Ephesians 3, uh, go back to Ephesians, Ephesians 3, we're almost, we're almost through here. I was that close put to try to put it all. You know how I am. I want to put it all on the same <laughs> the same Sunday. And I was that close to finishing this, uh, but next week will be the the living example of what we're doing today. Uh, chapter three, verse five. Uh, The knowledge of the mystery, which in other ages has not been made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same, of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, Amen. the good news of salvation through Christ. Amen. Remember that, never forget the gospel is the good news of, and it doesn't, it's not just good news, it's the good news of salvation through Christ. Uh, not through what we do, but what he did. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Uh, and then he go, then go on down. Uh, um, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with, with what? Confidence through faith in him. So again, here's another, this is the Apostle Paul saying we have boldness uh, and we have uh, confidence 
in our access to our Father through faith in Him. Uh, and that's that's a that's an amazing statement. So what gives us what gives us boldness? Look, uh, Believing in Jesus. Amen. Like, look at look at back up one chapter, chapter two, verse thirteen. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, have been what? Brought near by your good works. By what? By the blood of Christ. We go down to verse 18. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. That's so good. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing truth? That's an amazing thing. We belong to the family. Amen. Look at, Col <laughs> look at Colossians. That's why, you know, it, used to, it seems almost a little odd today, but we, in churches, a lot of churches, they call each other brother and sister. You know, brother Skidmore and brother, you know, sister so-and-so. Uh, but it, 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 it is true. It is, it is true. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 Say, say that again. Are we our family? <laughs> we do call each other sister. Yeah. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you who were once alienated and enemies, where? In your mind. <laughs> By wicked works. Now, what's a wicked work? What's the difference between a wicked work uh, and, a, and a dead work? A wicked, well, a wicked work is actually uh, uh, something, an activity that's not good. Uh, you know, that's not that's foreign to God's nature and His good, you know, His goodness. That's a wicked work. But a, a dead work is trying to fix that by what we do. Yeah. And He says that that's why we were alienated because we, our heart was not, our heart was, was, we were not recreated. We were not in Christ and new creations in Christ. Uh, yet now He has what? Reconciled. You ever, anybody, anybody account, any accountant would know what that means, right? When it's reconciled, at the bottom it balances out, right? For him it does. Sometimes for us it's, it can be red in the red or in the black. But uh, in the body, he is reconciled in the body. Of, look at this. In the body of his flesh through death to present you what? Holy, blameless. blameless and what? Above reproach. Above reproach. See, the reproaches that were, to, were supposed to fall on us fell on him. The reproaches that we were due fell upon him. So now because of Christ, we're presented holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about that next verse there, and we can go into that, but it doesn't change anything. It's the hope is in the gospel. That's all he's saying in that next next verse. And he's saying that because it's so easy in the mind to not understand and, and stay with that. That's why he says you can't, you, can't, you can't depart back from the faith of who we are because of what he says, that confession, not, not to go back on our confession, the hope of the gospel. Uh, now, uh, go back to Hebrews one more time. It's the last verse, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, what's when you see a therefore, you're supposed to find out what it's there for, right? Yeah. And if you go back to the previous section, it says that uh, for by one offering he has perfected forever those that are being sanctified. Mm -hmm. You have been perfected forever Amen. by one sacrifice. Therefore, Therefore, rather than having what? Boldness. Boldness. Parousia. This is uh, Tricia Gunn's ministry. It's a, it, because boldness is so important in our mind. Uh, to enter, by, <laughs> enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. We just talked about that a few minutes ago. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us what? Amen. Draw near with a true heart. Uh, in full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's what Tina was saying. She felt that the truth was, was, was conveying or re re reminding us of this morning in that passage out of uh, Revelation. Uh, an evil conscience is what? Sin conscience. Being sin conscious, being, uh, being conscious of our faults and our condition as opposed to our position. Uh, and we can't, you know, uh, we're the, this blood of Jesus is supposed to sprinkle us and cleanse us from thinking about it being about us. Amen. Uh, and making us realize that it's all about him. How can we not understand that and draw near with a, with a true heart and full assurance of faith? A true, what is the true heart? That's the question there. Again, in that, that hold fast our confession, the blank there in the notes, that word confession is homolo, homologio. Again, to say the same thing that God says. What does he say about Christ's work? Finished. He spoke it through his son. It's finished. It's, 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 it has forever uh, caused us to be brought near by his blood. Uh, our, uh, and of our hope without reading, for he who promised is faithful. So what is a true heart? What is a, what is a true heart? Recreated. The new, heart, the new heart that has confidence that it's all about Christ and it's not about us. Amen. That's what a true heart is. Um, an evil heart thinks, oh, go ahead, an evil heart thinks it's about us. Yes, I think that this word heart is one of the, the most corrupted words in the English language mm -hmm. because if you go to Absolutely, and so what in that can, in that situation where you're falsely leading people in that way, then see they they only feel like they can come draw near to God when they have everything right in their heart. But a true heart knows it's already right. Yeah, yeah. I would say that's uber law. In yeah. fact, it's worse than the law because the law at least tells you something you can do, and you know that you're doing it. When somebody says get your heart right, yeah. you don't even. Yeah, we don't understand that terminology. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. They're talking about manner of life. They're yeah. talking about everything you do. Yeah. When they're talking about get your heart right, yeah. Yeah. they're not talking about the born again, recreated spirit. They're talking about actions, Action. deeds, thoughts. Yeah. And, and, and for the see for the people who buy into that, you know, AKA Pharisees. Uh, you, you, your confidence begins to be in that, and you approach based upon a confidence that's profane. Yes. It's, a, it's profane. It's unacceptable to God, uh, and they, they don't they don't understand that, that what they're doing it's all it's all related to pride. It's all it's all based upon dead works, uh, because there's only one work that was dead, but now he's alive. Right. Yeah. The one dead work that that God provided was the. That Jesus died on the cross and rose for our our justification. He was raised for our justification. So uh, that's a good point, and I think that's that's so critical for us to to, to not under, to understand what a true heart is. Mm -hmm. Your heart, the true heart, is cleansed from the, the consciousness that it's about you. Uh, and that's what that's what causes you to be able to draw near. Amen. Uh, and that is 
being having an evil conscience yeah. to to me right. is is thinking there is something that is separating me from the Father. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. And something that I, I can, need. I can do to, to fix. fix. I can do to fix it. Yeah. 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 And so, now that does is lead you to frustration if you're honest. If you're not, it leads you to being a hypocrite or an Elvis Presley. Yeah. Exactly. It's. Uh, you know, you're going to be an M&M, a spiritual M&M. I mean, you're miserable. You know, and when you're, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's the truth. It only leads you, and, and I don't know, I'm not sure which one's the word. They're, they're both bad sides of the, of the wrong tree. That's right. Uh, but I lived for 40 years trying to eat, eat from the good side of the wrong tree. And instead of going to the tree of life, I thought by eating on the good side of the tree of knowledge was what God was interested in. And that's, an, that's that part that's not true. It, 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 it has the false, we were falsely taught that, that we had to make ourselves right. And we're still trying to repair that that collateral damage. We're still trying to, and that's why I felt like he wanted me to, to teach and this message and bring you reminder after reminder after reminder in the scripture yes. that we can draw near by one reason and one reason alone. But that when we, when we won't realize that one reason then there is no separation and no no uh, no gap between the nearness we have to our Father, actually being in Christ. I was, as you were quoting the scripture, I looked it up in the Greek, and the word "true" there means what's reality. What's the reality? Yeah. What is the real truth? And and the heart is the cardia, that centrality of our spiritual our spiritual life, and yeah. that is that we are recreated, born again. Child yeah. of God with the identity that comes from Him. And he's, that's why it says, let us hold fast our confession, our homologia, yeah. agreeing with God that we've been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Amen. That we have a perfect holiness, perfect righteousness, perfect sanctification, perfect redemption, perfectly justified, uh, perfectly uh, holy. All of those things that we are, conditionally, uh, positionally, is what will change the conditions of our life, especially in light of our ability to draw near. To be able to draw near to him, he doesn't want he doesn't want there any anyone or anything to cause you to to be um, hindered in in drawing near. So you're already there. You're already. You're, you're, you, I love what John says. You know, he writes his whole he writes his his whole uh, gospel, and he, and he mentions this guy five times that was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yeah. Never calls him by name. But now we know who it was, and it was only recorded in John's Gospel. So, see, there's a guy that was leaning on the bosom of the Father's, when he leaned on the bosom of Jesus' heart, when he, on his heart, he was feeling the expression of that unconditional, unmerited love yeah. and favor that comes because of what Christ is, is, is doing for him. And so he considers him that. So, anyway, uh, let us draw near this morning. And in the profession in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, I want you to see every time I talk about this, I want you to understand that it's the unity of the Trinity that's on board with this. There's not the Father's not trying to keep you away, and the Son's drawing you near. The Holy Spirit's not trying to comfort you. Well, if you keep up the good work, you'll get there. Now, this is all this is all the, 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 the Trinity bringing us into this truth. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So notice it's the grace of the Lord, uh, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Again, this it's the will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit that, that he wants to bring us into this relational, better understanding relationally of, of how he, he longs for us to draw near right. uh, and, to, and, to, and, and to be relationally, uh, in a, in a, you know, a father... I'm just saying this because I, you know, I had a, I had a grandfather that was very, you know, huggy feely. You know, he was always wanting me to sit in his lap and everything. He was always doing stuff. My dad was a little more distant, so I'm glad I had my grandfather's. But because there's something about a kid's heart that wants to jump up in the, yeah. your dad's lap, mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's what he wants. That's what he wants for us. He wants to us to enjoy. The relationship that he that he gave his son to give us, and for us to draw near with, with full assurance of faith, with, with faith with a true true heart, uh, and confession and, and 
holding fast our confession. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's take Amen. let's take communion together. I know some of you may have to lose your head. You know, this is the age old question. Yeah. Of a pro how how can we approach God? It's like from Genesis to Revelation, it's the biggest, it's all the source of all religion is how can we have access to God? Well, in, in fact, the first the first temptation was for us to doubt God's heart. Yeah. yeah. Are we really welcome? Has Are God we really said, is, is that what he really is he really out for your good? Does he really want you to have life? Yeah. yeah. Is he hiding something for you from something something from you that does he have your best interest? Does he have your best interest in him? Uh, Can you trust him? Right. And that's that doubt is what he still make, wants to make us struggle with. And it, and it does. It has an effect on our on our freedom to draw near. And I, did, I think he, he wants us to rest in our rest our hope completely on the Lamb, uh, on Jesus, and let that cause us in our hearts to to. to be able to, to daily draw near. Uh, I I have to confess, even in the grace, even in this this word of His grace that I that I've been drawn to and, and changed by so dramatically, there is sometimes things that can technically get in our can can cause us to technically get into a place of going through motions, mm -hmm. grace motions, as opposed to operating in a relational grace relationship yeah mm -hmm. he, he did it he did it these things are these are not technical points they're relational points mm -hmm. because God is or, or he wants us to draw mm -hmm. he wants us to be close to him because in that freedom and in that liberty and in that that re, that relationship and closeness is where we really can hear him the best yeah. where, where he can confirm to us things that Concerns and questions and doubts, and uh, Daddy can make it all right. That's right. Perfect love, Castle. My dad, all my dad had to do sometimes when I got scared, was put his hand on my shoulder, and everything was okay at that point. He could slay giants, you know. I knew he could slay giants if he, if he needed to for my sake. And sometimes we just need to understand that you know, the Father wants you near to his to, to him. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a great reminder of that. Amen. Amen. We, we, Lord, we thank you for your body, Jesus, your body and your blood that put us in this relational experience as sons and daughters of the Most High God. That that He so loved us that He sent you uh, to become our sin, so that we could become yes. His righteousness, so that the Holy Spirit could confirm in our hearts this position of, of you being our Abba. And we have this in this relational position with you that can ever, 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 ever be changed. And so we just we thank you for sharing the glory of this gospel with us, and letting us experience this in the in the midst of our the, the, your table in the midst of our enemies. The enemy's trying to tell us otherwise. Yes. This is a reminder of truth. This is a reminder that brings us back to that true heart that you did finish it. You did in your body what was needful to. to bring wholeness to our body. And Lord, we thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, this blood of the new covenant that forever has us sealed. This redemptive, this redemptive blood that we that we've been redeemed by, completely and totally redeemed into a new covenant relationship that can only fail if the, the father or, the, or, the, or if the son fails in his role. And we think we're so thankful that that can't happen ever. And we just we just appreciate this. We draw near in true with a true heart now because you you've caused us to be uh, one spirit with you by this new covenant in Jesus' name. Okay, and then next week we're gonna we're gonna uh, go to a couple of passages where Jesus actually shows us, demonstrates this whole process, and uh, and so. Uh, <laughs>
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And me. Amen. I say amen. Amen.